Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, October 15th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storms on Us Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Chicago, Illinois. Well, the good old Unix sudo utility is making news again and not in a good way. Sudo has a history of vulnerabilities and well, what it's trying to accomplish isn't necessarily easy. You're typically using sudo in order to fairly carefully assign privileges to users and allow them to run commands as other users. And among those users, well, you may also have the super user root. The problem this time is if you are permitting users to run commands as any other user but root, it may still possible for them to actually run a command as root. Looks like a sort of an integer overflow that is the cause here. If you are passing the UID minus one, which of course isn't really valid to sudo, it will actually execute the command using the UID zero or root. Instead of minus one, you can also use 4,294,967,295, just your maximum 32-bit number. And in your logs, you will not see UID zero, but instead minus one or the 4 billion number that the user entered. Also, PAM, the pluggable authentication module, modules won't actually get executed in this case. So this is really a privilege escalation vulnerability. A user already has to have access to the system and the user already has to have some sudo permissions to run commands as another user. Still something you probably do want to patch quickly because exploitation is relatively straightforward. And over the last few days, there was a bit of a controversy about how Apple implemented the safe browsing feature in particular in the latest version of iOS. Now, the way safe browsing works is that your browser will check the URL that you're about to visit against a blacklist that's typically operated by Google. Google's safe browsing API receives a hash of the URL you're going to visit. So not actually the URL itself. And then it will return essentially whether or not this URL is deemed to be safe. Now, if this URL is in Google's safe browsing index, then of course, Google knows what URL you visited. And even though given that URLs are somewhat limited and also these hashes are apparently just 32 bits, it's not that much out of the question to at least narrow down what URL you are about to visit, even if it's not in the list. Now, the problem Apple apparently had was that Google's services are not reachable from within China because unlike Apple, Google typically doesn't sort of play along with the various restrictions that uh, China does impose on content. So as a workaround, apparently, Apple also added the Chinese company's 10 cents uh, safe browsing feature. The result of this was that allegedly URLs that you would visit with iOS are actually being sent to the Chinese Tencent service. Now, according to a statement from Apple, this only happens if you are located in China and the Google Safe Browsing API is not reachable. I did a little bit of experimenting with that with iOS and couldn't see any connections to Tencent. And I'm actually also going to publish some packet captures that I took with Apple's new Catalina operating system, just sort of as it boots up and as it's visiting a website and didn't actually see any safe browsing either to Google or to Tencent from Catalina. I'll do a little bit more investigating here, but at this point, it sounds like Apple's description of this feature is accurate and it's limited to iOS. And researchers at Princeton University came up with a neat automated system 
to check video streaming software for any tracking that is done by submitting identifying information back to the companies streaming the video. Well, the system they built essentially downloads the application, then interacts with it in streaming some video, and it does intercept connections uh, TLS or not to investigate these connections for various tracking IDs. What they found was that pretty much all of the streaming software they looked at and they looked at over 2000 applications used with Roku and Amazon Fire Sticks did send back MAC addresses, SSIDs and device IDs. Given that the same software is pretty much used on various other streaming platforms as well. I wouldn't be too surprised if the same tracking happens on pretty much all video streaming software. Well, and the zip for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.